All right, welcome back. We are getting going here with our second group of the day um, with the second half of our capstone presentations. This is the other batch of grads who were with our uh, first group in class for the last three months. Um, for those of you who are just joining us for this section, my name is Amanda Hale. I've been the lead instructor and I've had the privilege of working with these students over their time with Actualize over the last 12 weeks um, as they learn the, the, the fundamentals of web development and become the developers you see before you today. Um, Jay is our CEO and founder. Um, and I wanna say thank you to him as well as to our career support staff, Sarah and Lisa, um, and all of our TAs. We had a lot of them this cohort. Uh, I had Sam, Chelsea, uh, Tim, um, Eric and Daniel help out throughout the course of our time together. Um, and we're super grateful that we had the opportunity to work with so many wonderful and talented TAs. Um, yeah, so welcome to all our family and friends who have been supporting us through this journey. Um, and we have a new panelist this second half, uh, Adam Kiney joins us, who's also an actualized graduate um, from before I started teaching here. Um, but Jay, did you have a few things you wanted to say for this group? Oh, I'm excited to see all of your presentations. Um, I'm not gonna give my whole speech again, but excited to see what uh, all the hard work that you've put in. So uh, thank you to all of you for putting in all that work. Excited to see the presentations. Excellent. And then Adam, if you would like to introduce yourself to us uh, and tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since you left Actualize. Hello, everyone. Uh, I graduated from Actualize in September of 2019. That's what my diploma says right there. Um, since then, I've been working at Intercom for about a year and a half, uh, first as a customer support engineer, and I just recently transitioned into an operations analyst role. Uh, so I'm definitely using the skills I learned from Actualize. I'm happy to be back here to help you all uh, graduate. Let's do it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, for the second group, we're going to begin with Jordan, and Adam will be paneling for Jordan. Um, hi, uh, my name is Jordan, uh, and this is Artful. Artful is an art appreciation app, um, and Artful, hang on, let me move my Zoom controls. Um, Artful also kind of got started as an idea even before Actualize. Um, earlier this year, I wrote a proposal with a developer and a, two, two friends of mine, a developer and a designer, to the Activating Smithsonian Open Access Challenge. Um, to basically, uh, they were looking for public engagement projects using the Smithsonian Open Access API, and that wasn't funded. So we never really got that project off the ground. But then once I started Actualize, I had um, I had to think of my idea for my capstone project. And I thought back to that proposal, and I thought about how could I sort of scale back this idea that I had with these two friends of mine that I proposed to something that I could do on, like with limited experience on my own in three months. And that's where Artful is today. Um, so really, uh, the key features of Artful are, it's basically a platform where users can make an account and search through in a catalog of images uh, and add them to their own personal galleries with a note or a journal entry about uh, why that piece of art is important to them and whether or not they've seen it in person um, at a particular museum. So I'm gonna start off um, and actually show you some of the features of Artful now. So to, uh, to start out, uh, when you're not logged in, there's sort of a limited uh, things you can do. You don't see your gallery because you're not, not logged in obviously, but you can, as a guest user, look at uh, the images tab. So you can search for a piece of art. Um, we could look for like, sorry, I'm on caps lock for some reason. Uh, you could look for a Van Gogh and it'll show you all the Van Goghs in the collection. But so this is really all you can do as a guest user. So let's actually log in as someone. Um, so we're going to go to the login page and we're going to be John Cena, uh, little known patron of the arts. Uh, so now we are logged in and you can, and now our gallery, which is the homepage basically, is populated with uh, the art that we saved previously. So uh, John Cena is interested in Starry Night. He's interested in the portrait of George Washington in the National Portrait Gallery. Um, and this shows you the images and also 
uh, information about the, the, the art and your notes that you've left about it. Um, and also has an edit button here where you can edit your notes, which I'll show you in a minute. For, but first let's add a new image to the, uh, to John Cena's gallery. So we're gonna filter for Chicago uh, and this will show us two images uh, because they're in the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, and I like uh, this George Surratt painting a lot, very pointillist. Uh, so we can go to the show page for the image and it gives us the option to add to your gallery. So we pick on, click on this uh, button and here we can leave our little notes about it. Um, so I'm going to grab really quick what John Cena has to say about this thing, about this piece of art, which is that uh, he remembers it being in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, there must it, therefore it must be good. Um, so he has seen it in person. He's been to uh, Chicago. So we're gonna click Submit. And now it routes us to our homepage and we can see that it, it is now populating in the home gallery. So now we're also gonna edit an existing, like a previous uh, image. Uh, so let's go to Starry Night. And it is so beautiful. He says that he could cry manly tears. So we're gonna say the manliest tears and we'll hit submit and we'll see that this change has been um, uh, populated again in the home gallery. So then the final uh, bit that I'll show you is that we also have a galleries feature where you can see the, the galleries of other users and see what they have to say at particular pieces of art. So we have uh, browse galleries. We've got this like carousel feature where you can go in between with these little dots, uh, different images. So we have all the users that we have using the app. We're gonna go to Joe Schmo's gallery and see that the users, other users galleries looks like your home gallery, but um, with sort of the different username and different pronouns. Um, so, Joe Schmo doesn't quite understand the art. So he's, he's a little confused a lot of the time. He doesn't get it, uh, but really that's okay because the idea of behind Artful uh, for me is that I want it to make art more accessible for really everyone. So anybody can use this app. Um, and with, with that being said, uh, in the future, I would like to, um, I would like to, uh, to maybe in that vein, add some more social features to make it so that you can actually like follow or add friends or connections uh, within the app. So you can have networks of people uh, and their art that you follow. Um, and then something I really wanna do is make it uh, really like actually connected to the Smithsonian or other museums APIs. So it's pulling that live data and more content for uh, users to actually experience. Um, and that's all I have right now. And I uh, welcome your questions. Here with, well, um, uh, from Adam. First off, excellent presentation, wonderful app. I think it looks great. Um, so my first question is, because this is, uh, I think I already know the answer, but um, being an appreciator of art, which was more fun for you to build, the front end or the back end? <laughs> I think the, the answer may surprise you. Uh, I feel like I, I found myself a lot more frustrated with the front end because I think like there's also quite a little bit of a distinction between like art and design. And so like the design aspect I found sometimes frustrating. I liked the back end, I think, because I found I find Rails very straightforward. Like it can be finicky, but like it has like a like specific things it needs and um, when it works, it works. And then I just I feel like the Vue.js and the JavaScript was kind of the Wild West for me. <laughs> All right. Well, if you knew what you know now, um, what might you have done differently about the front end that maybe could have made it less frustrating for you? So I can show you actually in my code, one thing that I found very frustrating sure. and that I now know I could have like uh, done differently. So here there's a, a V4 loop mm -hmm. um, where I have to go through to, to get the notes and the image, the images, the image URL that is being pulled from the backend and the notes on each 
image uh, in the galleries are coming from a different sort of JavaScript object or coming from a different basically um, hash or object. Uh, and it was very different. It was very difficult on the front end to like get them to sort correctly. So I had to, or get them to pair correctly. So sometimes I would get one image with the wrong journal entry. Like it, they didn't match up. So like if I, if I had done it again, I might just in the back end write a function to send those pieces of information together to the front end instead of trying to figure that out entirely on the front end. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Kind of relating to that, uh, next question kind of relates to that. The notes, the comments that people could leave in their gallery, do those mm -hmm. note, does that note object, does that belong to the user or does that belong to the image? It belongs to neither. It belongs to a join table, which, so the gallery itself is a join table between user users and images. Mm. Um, and the notes actually live on the join table. Good to know. All right, excellent. Yeah. You mentioned, last question, you mentioned okay. uh, uh, in the future, possibly adding in social features. Uh, do you think it would be, you think it'd be, or had you considered uh, allowing users to comment on other users' notes? So basically looking at someone else's gallery and adding a note to the note they had already added. Uh, I think that would be a cool feature. I think it might take a little bit of like, adding to the back end and like how the different tables are organized, but I don't think that would be too difficult. Yeah, cool. um, but like that, would, that would be pretty cool, I think. Cool, all right, just, just a thought, but excellent yeah. uh, presentation, excellent app. I think uh, this is fantastic, so well done. Thank you. Nice job, Jordan, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we've got Jason and Jay will be paneling for Jason today. All right, guys, so I'm going to do a little test here. Surprise, surprise. Were you able to hear that sound? Yes. You were, okay. All right, very good. So let me close that out because that's not. So that's relevant because uh, my, amp is called, my app is called Campfire. Uh, my name is Jason McKenzie and the idea behind the app was originally to create a playlist creator for, for Bandcamp. Uh, Bandcamp is a website that uh, myself and a lot of my friends who are musicians or in bands use to upload their, their music, uh, distribute it that way. Um, but one of the drawbacks about Bandcamp is that for whatever reason, they kind of refuse to make a playlist creator. Um, and so a lot of uh, my other friends also use Spotify. Um, and one of the ways that we use Spotify is to create playlists, share music with each other, and kind of do lateral discovery that way. And, and again, just Bandcamp doesn't really have that function built in. They create their own and curate their own playlist, but they don't really make that available to the end user. So um, I have for years wanted a way to have Bandcamp users be able to create their own playlists, share music. And uh, there have been a couple of attempts at this out there, um, some of them pretty good, some of them limited, but it was something that I personally personally wanted to do. And so that was the original conception behind the app. Um, I ran into some, some struggles with it, which I can talk about in a little bit, um, but it became more like a universal streaming playlist creator uh, in this current implementation. So um, looking at it real quick, uh, the landing page is, a, you know, uh, anybody would come here. Uh, you don't have to have a login. You don't have to sign up necessarily to be able to look at the playlist. Um, and so this is going to be an index of all of the playlists that have ever been created on the system. Um, and so you can come in here, click on one, click on one of these tracks and, and play it. I'll go into the, some of those others a little bit later. Um, and so Ideally, this would go to a streaming Bandcamp link, um, but uh, that's a little bit challenged right now, which again, I'll, I'll discuss in a minute. Um, so very easy sign up. Um, once somebody signs up, they'll go to their user page or if they log in, they'll go to their, their user page. Um, and so once you log in, the first thing it takes you to is the list of the playlists that you've created. Um, and so this is, uh, Jane Doe's playlist. Um, and so she can go in and kind of look at, at all the things that she's created, play through those, et cetera. Um, log out. 
takes you back to the home page with all the, the main index. Um, and then if you go into another user, it'll show, in this case, Joe Blow's playlist. And so um, right now it can play uh, really any streaming media. Um, so you've got Nine Cat here. But I'm mostly using YouTube links right now just because uh, they're easier to find um, and more predictable. You can also, as that user, edit the playlist right now. You're only editing the name for it or deleting it. Um, and then you can obviously create playlists and that's the entire idea behind the app. And so. Uh, what you would do here is this can just be demo day playlist. We're going to do if I can type. So the first thing you do is you save that song and then you hit create playlist. It will now take you back to your main uh, or to your, your user playlist. And then the track is there. So that's pretty much the idea behind the app. Um, you know, I had uh, a lot of struggles with uh, getting the data just because, and, and the reason that I ended up going with YouTube uh, links on a lot of this stuff is that when I was building it originally, um, I saw that Bandcamp had an API um, and I went ahead and requested access to it, but it took them a while to get back to me. Uh, they eventually denied my request because I'm not a label. Um, and so apparently you have to be a record label to, to get access to that API. And so um, they don't expose a lot of the data um, easily. In fact, um, it's hidden, the streaming link that I would need to actually get this working is hidden within some JavaScript and that gets updated uh, pretty regularly. And so even if I were to scrape that one time um, and put that into the database, uh, that's not gonna work. So I need to build a, you know, some way to do that dynamically, basically with every play. Um, so right now it's it's built kind of off of any other uh, streaming link, but the idea would be to to pull that stuff from Bandcamp uh, at some point in the future. So, so that is Campfire in a nutshell at at its current build. Um, and the thing about this app is because I'm going to have to figure out a way to get all that stuff dynamically, uh, I'm probably going to have to build uh, a custom scraper. Um, I'm actually glad that I didn't get much farther in the front end that I did here because it's going to, uh, the back end is going to change quite a bit. This is actually an app that, like I said, um, I want to have for myself. Uh, and so I will continue working on this until I'm satisfied with it. Uh, but that's going to require really a lot of extra work on the back end once I understand how to get that data um, kind of in real time. Um, and then from there, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll kind of, um, implement a lot of extra front end features that I just didn't get to at this point. So this is so cool, Jason. Um, really nice job. It's it's cool that you're building something to try to you know scratch your own itch. And I hope that you get to see this to completion. Another option, by the way, is that you can just create your own label, and then Bandcamp will give you access. That's possible. <laughs> and I, and I you know I have friends that I could I could use for that, um, and I might do that, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in the challenge because there is a, a, another app that that found a way to do it. Um, and so I'm going to go look at and kind of reverse engineer what they've done. Cool. Uh, it's a lot of custom JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't really have time for in this course. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'm going to really dig into how they accomplished it. Uh, we're you know connected on Twitter, and so if I really need to, I can kind of bug them there. But um, but yeah, it's it's definitely not going to continue to exist in this form, and I'm not uh, not just going to abandon it after this. So, got it. Yeah, I mean, reverse engineering is certainly a skill in itself. Uh, yeah. So, 
good luck with that. Um, I, I love I love the look of this. Um, is this based at all on a theme, or is it your own custom CSS or a combination of both? Yes, this is absolutely a theme. Um, I I did a little customizing uh, just to get things to format correctly. But uh, in fact, if I were to redo anything on the front end, the, the main thing is I would have picked a theme that that had uh, a header and a footer. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking for something that had uh, kind of a nice table layout for the tracks. Uh, in the end, that ended up not being as relevant since I don't have you know a lot of the other data in here right now but it didn't have any real sort of header or foot, footer at all. Um, and so as I was uh, cracking open the code, I was like, wait, where are these things and what is in there? And there really wasn't much. And so uh, that would be probably the primary difference I would, I would change on the front end in the future. Got it. Um, what accomplishment are you most proud of in, when it comes to building this app? Yeah, so the, the biggest struggle um, really was within creating the playlist, um, so, you know, you input the playlist name, song name, et cetera. Um, and so because I've got saving that information plus creating the playlist, which basically creates the association between the song and, and the playlist itself, um, all on the same page, it was a little bit of a struggle of how to save this data. Um, and so I ended up having to write uh, a couple of methods specifically for each of those, nest those within the creation of the playlist and song, and then have a fifth method that would do the association between them. And so um, just kind of uh, creating all that logic uh, within the front end um, was probably the, the biggest challenge. But that was actually the funnest part um, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I think a lot of people would would say that you know we're comfortable with the back end you know we maybe we struggled a little bit with the front end or whatever and so maybe they would have some preferences one way or another um for myself uh the i i think i've told people in the classes a, a number of times i like things that kind of make you know blinky lights and and you know flashing stuff and making sounds and whatever and so that happens on the front end you need to have the back end kind of ready to go but right. you 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 pull all that together on the front end. And so that was really the most fun part, but also the most challenging, so. Got it. Well, so it's a hallmark of a good dev uh, that you enjoy the most challenging parts. So it's awesome to hear. Thank this you. is fantastic, Jason. Really nice job. Congratulations. You're welcome. Thank you, Jason. Uh, next up, we've got Daniel, and Adam will be paneling for Daniel today. All right, hello everyone. My name is Daniel and I am a big sports fan, uh, sports of all types. And one of the ways that this kind of manifests for me is actually manage a series of what we call wins pools um, to kind of explain what this is like before a given season. Let's take baseball as an example here. I, me and like three other friends, we all draft teams. Everyone gets their own assigned teams and I keep track of their current records of those teams and the combined wins and losses of them over the entire season. The way I currently do that is through like a series of spreadsheets and I have to manually adjust the win loss record like every week and it takes me like five to 10 minutes each time. So I thought what a great idea to, or what a great opportunity to have my capstone automate this whole process for me and be able to demonstrate how it looks and works over here. So this is called the Dub Hub because it's about tracking dubs, The wins you know, kind of the whole point of sports in general the theme kind of allows for this little sidebar to toggle in and out so you can really feel like you're at the game if you'd like um, but i kind of demonstrate how it works here so we'll first sign up a user and i'm going to sign up george brett over here the famous pine star incident individual um, also one of the only four players with 300 career batting average, 3,000 hits and 300 home runs. And let's get him all logged in here. All right, so George Brett now has the option to either join an existing group or create his own. So he is an individual, he's gonna create his own group here. And he played third base or also known as the hot corner. So he's gonna name his group the hot corner here and how his group has been created. He can join this group 
The problem is he has no teams assigned to him. So he has no teams to keep track of. So he's got to add those into his you know, own little database here. Um, we can go to this all teams tab, which will actually pull all of the teams in the major in Major League Baseball. And first it'll update the teams to their current standings and then sort them all by their current, like from descending from most wins to fewest wins. So George Brett played his entire career for the Kansas City Royals. So we're gonna have him add that team on there. And, you know, he grew up in West Virginia, also played third base. I think he was probably a fan of Brooks Robinson and the Baltimore Orioles. Unfortunately, the Baltimore Orioles are the worst team in baseball, but he's going to add them to his group as well here. So we got that added in. And you can also see that George Brett was the one that was logged in right there. I'm going to log out and then log in. Wade Boggs, also a hot corner third baseman with a temper. Um, so we get bugs in there. Oops. Let's see. And you know, he didn't want to put in all the extra work of creating his own group. Boom, Hot Corner already exists. I'll join this group as well. And then boom, his teams are already populated. You play for the Yankees and the Red Sox. His combined wins and loss records are right there versus the combined wins and loss records for George Brett. And these will auto update based on the current standings there to kind of show a little bit more robust example here we have babe ruth with his six teams listed right there 417 wins 347 losses total and we have reggie jackson over here missing out behind by four wins and 354 losses right there so a couple of the things that took a lot longer than maybe I anticipated or were some of the challenges that I faced doing this was of course having the standings auto update. That was the main thing that I wanted my app to do, but I also understood that that's not, wasn't the first thing I was gonna be able to build out. So I did have all the teams kind of put in as hard coded and static with their wins and losses just to make sure everything, all the functionality worked. And then in the back end, I ultimately um, built this scraping tool, which will pull all the standings from this table here and it iterates through and grabs like the team name, the win and the loss and then moves on to the next team here. And then it'll update my team's database with those current standings. And then I'm able to render those updated standings as well with my index. Um, so that took a long time to build out the functionality to be able to do that. And I was really excited once I was able to get it through. And then I was having the problem where I wasn't being able to pull the team ID when I was adding a user or adding a team to a user's um, list. So it was actually the solution um, was to have multiple Axio requests on the same all teams here. So every time you click this, it will update all of the standings and then it will render those updated standings, which allows me to um, pull the IDs from them. Yeah. So um, as far as what I enjoyed work most was part of the front end the back end i feel like i was much more comfortable in the back end i could it was a lot easier to make changes to stuff um and not feel like i'm screwing everything up but i definitely enjoyed working on the front end as well um just adding all these little tiny color scheme stuff adding little baseballs next to here and all the stuff and up there as well i could tinker with it forever um, which was the, both the good and the bad thing and as far as future um Additions to the project, I would really like to be able to like do this with multiple sports leagues, like having it, you know, be a drop down or something ahead of this, which would be leagues, and you can select baseball or football or basketball or hockey or whatever your preference might be, and then keep track of those on an individual basis. But yeah, that's the dub hub that I created here, and I'm open up to Adam if you have any questions. Awesome. Great job. Uh, I love the uh, picture in the background. That's Bush Stadium, right? St. Louis? That is Bush Stadium. I'm a Cardinals fan. I know that there's Hometown. some probably some Cubs fans over here too. Oh, right on. Yeah, no, you've got the right guy. I'm a Cards fan as well. I don't even like baseball, but I like the cards. There you go. But back to the app. Um, what was your favorite feature of this app to build? Uh, definitely the getting these to auto update. Um, I was, I don't have it pulled up right now, but uh, I, had, I had actually built this out to pull like a scrape everything out of this pretty quickly and i was actually able to do that for both football and basketball as well but it was linking that up and updating all of my existing teams table or data that was the real challenge um 
but uh, actually on a day off, I just spent like most of the day doing it and just had a blast the whole time. And when I finally got it working, it was like, really felt like it all came together and I was super excited and proud of uh, the results of it. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Um, if you knew what you knew now, would you have done differently building that scraper, building a different part of the app or uh, what, what do you wish you could take back or do differently? So the big one that I um, wish I could have done over, I mean, it didn't end up causing too much of a delay on the project, but what I did have to kind of, you know, start from do, do a couple things over again. I didn't realize I would need a join table because I wanted multiple users to be able to select the same team. And before it was only allowing one user to select a specific team. So I had to add this join table in later on in the process. Um, it actually wasn't too difficult to do um, and also be able to add to it. But then I had the issue of removing teams. So yeah, speaking of which I didn't demonstrate, but um, teams can, or users can also remove their teams from it. And that actually took a lot longer than I thought just deleting an entry on the join table. Um, but I eventually got that working as well. Cool, cool. Um, just kind of curious, uh, you, you create the groups um, and then mm -hmm. each user within the group has their teams, uh, but then this is just for like one season or can it go through several seasons? Do you have any sort of distinction about like, can one group have multiple different sort of games going or do you have to create a new group every time you want a new game? So the, this is a kind of built out to only work for one specific season. I mean, this is something that you guess you could track um, over multiple seasons, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I, the, the, someone had the idea also, I thought of like, you could keep it running through multiple sports leagues and you could kind of track the win loss record of like your favorite teams in multiple leagues. And that could something that could run year round. Um, but as of right now, it's on a per season basis, at least per league that is. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. Well, great job on this. Uh, I, that sounds like fun. Honestly, it sounds like something I would do. I got a lot of friends that do fantasy baseball, fantasy football, that sort of thing. So excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Next up, we have Mavilis and Jay will be paneling for Mavilis today. Alrighty, so hi everyone, my name is Mavelis. My app is called Tidy Park, as you see here. Uh, I was inspired to create this app because of a need that I saw in my community. I live in New York City and New York City is filled with many, many people. However, many people equals to a lot of waste. So when it starts to get warm, the sun comes out, right? Many would come out naturally to enjoy the parks the city has to offer, right? However, the only thing is, is that by the end of the day, the people would leave, but the trash would stay behind, right? So in the past, I would report a park to the city that need, needed some extra uh, cleanup or attention, but the process would take longer than I would have liked. So I thought, why not create an app where people can select a park that needs some love, report their observations and post their findings. The app would return the most requested park that needs the most attention and the company would reach out to the users that signed up so they can go ahead and tackle the mess. So I created uh, this app here with all the basic CRUD actions that I'm going to show you what the user can do. So it says here, hi, welcome to Tidy Park, go green or go home, right. <laughs> hitting the streets to keep New York City parks neat. Um, I have the sign up button here. I have some customized images just to make the app look nice. I have an info about me section or about us section here about Tidy Park, a button here that leads to the uh, New York City Parks list. Um, Tidy Park was founded on uh, four core values, service, community, commitment, and fun. Uh, we have a form here that the users can go ahead and uh, contact uh, Tidy Park. We have a section here, it says post your park cleanup on social media using the hashtag Tidy Park and or hashtag bin it. So anybody can basically post their experience on social media and use those uh, hashtags to give Tidy Park a shout out. All right, so I'm going to sign up. All right, so I'm already an existing user, so I'm not gonna sign up, but basically a new user would have to input all this information, right? It says, get excited to tackle some trash, hashtag bin it. So we are in, uh, the first step out of three steps here. So I'm an existing user, so I'm just gonna log in. All righty, here's my login page. I'm on my way, I'm in step two. I will submit. 
And I have a pop up. Welcome back. Let's get ready to tackle some mess. And then there's a button that says right on. <laughs> so I'm going to click on that. All right, so here are my New York City Parks pages, right? So I'm gonna click on this button to take me to the top. And I have a map here. I used Mapbox Studio. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. I have customized icons of garbage bins. When you click on it, you see the park name and a description, some fun facts about the park and a little history. So you get to learn about New York City history. So that's pretty cool. Um, we are in step three, we get to select a park. Over here it says next park to clean is Pelham Bay Park. So, so far that is the most requested park that needs some attention and needs some TLC, right? All right, so I'm gonna go and select a park. Um, I'm gonna choose Queens for my borough. I'm gonna choose this one. This one definitely needs some work. All right, interested in this park? Heck yeah, I am. So let me go commit to this. All right, I have a static image here that shows where the park is located. All right, so let's type in some observations. So what's happening in this park? I don't know, potato chips in a fountain. <laughs> Capri Sun's by the entrance. Uh, what does it need? It needs a lot of things. It needs, it needs some help. All right, how many people do I think it would need? Ah, three people. I'm available tomorrow. Let's put in tomorrow's date. Experience with park cleanups, yeah, one or two. My reason for this is because I love community service. Who doesn't love community service? So I'm gonna to commit to this park. Oh, look, it's telling me I actually need to format the date a different way. So let me go ahead and do that. And I will commit. All right, I'm gonna hit this button here. All right, so I'm in my account. So welcome to your account. Don't stress, we'll clean this mess. You may be small, but you are mighty. Now let's go make these parks nice and tidy. <laughs> All right, so which park is next in line for cleanup? What is the next park that's next in line? So this is where I go to my New York Parks page. And I see that it's actually changed. So the park that I selected actually became the most requested park. All right, so then I know as a user that this park is the park that needs the most attention. So um, let me go back to my account. Actually, I want to go ahead and just edit it. I'm actually not available this Saturday. I'm available this Sunday. So I'm going to change that. And I'm going to update my commitments. I got a pop-up box. It says updated. Your commitment has been updated. All right. So you see that updated here. And you know what? I'm actually not available at all. So I'm just going to delete it. <laughs> here I go. Delete park. Deleted, your commitment has been deleted. So I'm back to my account. So that's pretty much the gist of my app. Um, it was so much fun creating this app. I would say the most difficult parts were basically like coming up with the logic behind this. I deleted it, so the count went down. Uh, coming up with the logic uh, behind this, uh, this definitely took an extra set of eyes. And then tinkering them all around with Mapbox was a little challenging. But um, my next steps are, other than, other than making it look cuter, are to have it so that the user can also upload images of their findings. So I looked into this and saw that you can use a cloud storage. So I'll probably start looking into Cloudinary. I thought, um, I also thought that the back end was easier to build, but the front end was pretty fun because it reminded me of my MySpace days where I got to make my pages more personal and fun. So that's always um, a nice little um, nostalgia moment. But yeah, and then you, you can log out and take you back to this uh, landing page here. But that's my app. Any questions? Really nice job, Abelis. Um, Thank you. I'd love to hear about your experience with Mapbox and getting it to work and getting those garbage can icons. Uh, what was that process like for you? Yeah, it was cool. Mapbox has basically a nice tutorial. You can go into something called Mapbox Studio. You can create the data set. So it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Like you basically would select the area where you want your uh, marker to be and it saves that. And it basically saves it into the data set and you can plug that link, that style link, it creates a style link. You plug that style link into the uh, uh, already like laid out code that they have in their tutorial and then take that code and integrate it into your app. So that was pretty uh, cool. And then um, these icons here took a little tinkering because I had to basically use a converter uh, website to convert it to like an SVG file. And then oh. I 
able to make those icons look the way it was because it's not it's normally just like a regular like a like a regular like a triangle thing but i wanted it to make it look special <laughs> yeah no it looks great um yeah. yeah thank you for sharing that um where does the list of parks come from it's just a a list available on the web yeah i basically uh put them i hard coded uh the list of all the parks i just went to new york city parks.gov and i just looked at the different parks that are available and i hard coded it into my app got it did you take the like lat and longs from it or just the address um i took the just like the address the okay the size yeah and i just typed it in and i created my own data set like that got it cool what was um did anything surprise you about working on this app I, I underestimated the time it would take working with the theme. Um, it took a really long time, but at the same time, um, I had a lot of fun, like a lot of fun decorating uh, my app. And then it just, I got lost in it. I got lost in the <laughs> customizations. I really did. And then I didn't realize that I spent like hours and hours and hours on end. And then um, it's true. Like once you get into like coding, like you really have to like know when to stop. And at that moment, I, I didn't keep track of time. So I just had a lot of fun just decorating everything. I think that was my favorite part uh, <laughs> about the front end. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, I love this idea. It's, it's awesome and uh, really well implemented. Uh, this is a fantastic job. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mabelis. Uh, next up, we have got Ryan and Adam will be paneling for Ryan today. All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Searles and the app that I created is Dine for Less, uh, where stomachs and wallets stay full. Um, the reason that I created this app is I am actually moving to Denver this upcoming week and I don't know a ton about the city, especially when it comes to restaurants. Um, I'm personally a big food advocate. Uh, I love going out to eat, try new foods and uh, getting drinks with my friends. So I wanted to build out a centralized um, app where I could go on, look at different food specials and happy hours around the city of Denver. So to begin, you can go to this menu bar and sign up. And we're gonna sign up as a new user. So we're gonna create Dane. Okay, and then it's going to direct you to a login page. Awesome, and then it directs you back to your home page. So once you're logged in, you can go back up to this menu bar and click on restaurants, and this is going to bring you to a restaurants index page. So this shows the 15 uh, happy hour specials and food specials that I built out around Denver through my database. Um, as you scroll around, uh, it'll show you the title of each restaurant as well as the happy hour special for the restaurant. So say we come across the Sloan's Bar and Grill and we can click on it and this is gonna bring you to the show function. It shows the title of the restaurant, a big image of the restaurant. And then on the bottom, it shows you the neighborhood that it's in the food specials and the happy hour specials. And below that, we have an edit and delete function. Um, I know a lot of restaurants, they have rotating menus or they're just changing up their menus. Uh, maybe they have a seasonal beer on tap. So say that their happy hour special changed and they no longer have the dollar off drafts. We can change that, um, hit our submission. It'll direct us back to our index page. And then if we go to Sloan's Bar and Grill, they no longer have the dollar off their drafts. Um, also, as a logged in user, you can go back over to this menu bar and we can create a completely new restaurant. So we're gonna create a restaurant named Star Bar. It's in Sunnyside. The food specials are a $12 steak. Um, their happy hour is $4 drafts. And the image is Great, so when we create that, it brings us back to our index page. And then if we scroll down all the way, you can see star bar. 
and it shows us all of our information. And just to, to show the delete function here, we can delete the restaurant, and then it brings us back to our index page. Um, finally, you also don't have to uh, create a user. So say I log out here, it's gonna direct me to my homepage. Um, so if you don't have the intention of coming onto the site, adding new restaurants, updating or deleting any of the existing restaurants, you can just come as a visitor. And that's still gonna show you all the restaurants around the area. You're gonna be able to see all the happy hour and food specials. Again, you just won't be able to update or delete. Um, and as for my favorite feature of this app, I use a Mapbox API um, to show a visual representation of where these restaurants are located around the city of Denver. So say you're similar to me, uh, you're new to the city um, or you're on vacation in Denver and you're staying around U Union Station, uh, you can look at the map and you can check out around you how there's a handful of restaurants in this lower Highland area. There's also a few restaurants in the central business district. So you can know that there's some restaurants nearby you that are walking distance versus maybe some of these restaurants up by Sloan's Lake where you would have to get in your car and drive a little bit. Um, also on my homepage, I have, a, I have in my footer a form where you can submit, um, say there's a new restaurant going up down the street from you and you're super excited about it. You can fill out this form, um, send over an email to me and I'd be happy to get that restaurant updated because the more the merrier um, for these restaurants. And that is the primary functionality uh, for my app as of right now. Um, as for things I would like to implement in the future, um, I would love to have reviews for the restaurant. If I could pull from like a Yelp API and get reviews for all these restaurants, I think it would be super helpful. Um, I also wish that I had tags for the restaurant. So say the restaurant is a brewery or say they offer uh, karaoke late at night. I think it'd be cool to be able to filter these restaurants by that. And also if I could implement filtering the restaurants by their neighborhood that they're in. Um, but that is about it for now. That's the functionality of my app. Um, I think I enjoyed working on the front end more. Um, I think my mind just naturally works more towards the back end. So I liked the challenge and all the hurdles that I had to overcome on the front end to make my app look presentable and make it look good. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. That is Dine for Less. All right, well done. Looks great. Um, I gotta say the um, the design I think is really sleek. Is that, uh, did you just you pull a theme like as is? Did you add any sort of custom CS to a theme? Did you make this all you yourself? Like, Yeah, I wish I could take credit for it, but no, I definitely used a theme. Um, I took one from HTML5, I implemented it, and then I did mess with the CSS a little bit. Um, like on the bottom here, this footer, uh, naturally was actually shifted to the left. So I got some help and centered that. So just small tweaks, but primarily um, it was done through a theme. Looks great. I think you chose wisely there. Um, what feature were you pleasantly surprised by that it turned out better than you thought or was easier to implement than you thought? I would probably say the map box. It was my favorite feature. Um, and I would probably say they do a really good job with their documentation. Um, they walk you through like how to make a data set, which basically you just pin these different restaurants um, onto a map and then it'll bring you to a styling tab where you can add these uh, different icons where I chose martini glasses. Um, and then from there, you can basically just export it and then add it to, I added it to my homepage. And that was about it. So I think the map box, because the visual representation is awesome. It's nice to have an index of all these restaurants, but I think it's also equally as valuable to see where they are around town. Cool, cool. I will say I went to Denver earlier this summer, tried the green chili when you get there. It's fantastic. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll note when, that down right now. <laughs> when, um, one last question. So it looks like right now your app, uh, all the restaurants are, it's, it's basically a user that enters all the restaurants and all the information about the restaurants, correct? Yeah, correct. And so you mentioned you were in the future thinking about like calling an API like Yelp to get information about the restaurants. Um, were, have you considered like calling APIs to bring in restaurants to begin with? Yeah, no, I've also thought about that as well. Um, I think just for the sake of the app and the time crunch, um, I thought it'd be easiest for me to just 
uh, hard code in these 15 restaurants and then um, just to get it functional, get it showing. But down the road, I would love to be able to pull this information from APIs because as you can imagine, it does get a little redundant um, hand uploading all these different restaurants, uh, trying to figure out their happy hour specials, just like scouring Yelp reviews and whatnot or looking on their website. So I think by using APIs in the future, I could definitely save off some time and probably have even a little bit more accurate information. All right. Well, fantastic job. I think it looks great. Again, it looks like an app I would use. So way to go. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, next up, we have Penny. And Jay will be paneling for Penny today. Can you hear me all right? Okay, great. Hi, um, my name is Penny Galipter, and this is my app, Refer Everyone. Um, Refer Everyone, it was a concept that I came up with based off of some previous work I've done. Um, creating marketing campaigns and like viral marketing campaigns that people can share with their friends and also get money for referring their friends. Um, yeah, so this app is directed for marketers to go ahead and let's sign up as a new user. Um, so just for my new user, I have someone random who has a random email address. And don't tell anybody, but the password is just password. And when I hit sign up, it's creating a new user and um, nice feature that it automatically populates their email address on the login page now. Um, I already have a created account with some users, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in a different account. Um, and this is uh, George Lucas's account himself. And that's his email address. So George um, Lucas is now logged in, logged in and that brings you to this main campaign page. Um, you, he will see all his campaigns listed here. Right now, he only has one um, and you have all the info here. Um, if, uh, let's go ahead and click into that campaign. We can click view. I'll bring us to this campaign show page, which has these nice, beautiful cards. Um, and it shows you the, it shows you all the people who converted on this campaign. So we have the <laughs> um, Palpatine himself. And we see by right here that he was referred by nobody, but we have Darth Maul who was referred by Palpatine and so too for Vader. And Palpatine by doing that earned $200. Um, and if we go ahead, I'm just gonna go back a page and create a new campaign and show you how that whole process really looks. So if I go to the new campaign page, we can create a new campaign and George's new campaign is to become a forest ghost. And he is creating this campaign for the force um, with an image URL and the referral payment will be $15 per referral for every person who refers their friends. So just go ahead and hit create campaign. And that brings you to this page. Um, just gotta load it to be correctly. And on this same campaign show page, you actually have the link here that leads to the landing page for this um, campaign. So let's go ahead and click it. And we have now, you know, the name of the campaign with the with the company that's, that's, uh, that's referring and, this image shows up really nicely here on this side. Um, the first person to convert on this campaign is, uh, give me a second. It's Kwai Gon Jin. With a really great email address. Impressed that he was the first one to snag that. And that's his phone number. And then he goes ahead and presses me. And this brings him to the success page of you know, after he converts. So um, Qui-Gon now has, uh, as we see over here, um, the force thanks you and he now can refer his friends and earn serious cash. Um, and if I'm just gonna go back to this page, I'm just gonna reload it. And we see that the total conversions have changed and Qui-Gon is now listed here. So now let's say Qui-Gon wants to refer one of his friends 
let me go ahead and click, click this link. And using some query params um, to connect this back to Qui-Gon's own personal, um, you know, uh, to his user so that we can attribute the referral to him. So the next person who signed up was, now this is a surprise because nobody knows that this was, well, I think supposed to be his name. And he has a great email address for Yoda. And <laughs> this is his phone number. And if we go ahead and convert, we see that Yoda has zero conferrals, uh, zero referrals right now. But if we go look at over here, we see that Yoda was referred by Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon earned 15 bucks. And we updated the total incentive that was paid out and the ROI, which right now is just calculated by squaring the total incentive. But who knows what it'll be. Um, we do have the search feature for the, which, okay, which was working, but we do have the search feature um, to be able to pull up. Oh, I know actually why that happened. Um, if we go, sorry, Yoda. It's because uh, Qui-Gon was being referenced um, both places. So right now, if we just search for Yoda, we'll show up Yoda and it'll show up any place that Yoda's name will show up. Um, the last thing I did want to show you was there is a route to for an end user for a conversion because we don't create a user campaign uh, user account for them we just mark them down in a conversion table so there is a place for them to look up their conversion and it doesn't show up through the front end of the app because the front end of the app, I mean the main area of the app is really for marketers not there's no real portal built for people just who convert but if I go ahead and look up this phone number hit look up it's looking up all the places where somebody has converted and it shows them all the different campaigns that they converted on. And then we can see their stats by clicking here. This person doesn't have any um, referrals so far for this campaign. If I go back and look up, let's see if they, no referrals for this campaign, but um, it will show them once again, the link to share with their friends for these different campaigns. And it doesn't show any personal information for um, privacy reasons, because right now anybody can look that up. Um, yeah, thank you. So that is my app. And so I uh, just wanted to talk about some things. The thing I, I, I enjoyed most about this whole process really was the program, the project management of it, like the diagramming, going ahead, making sure I get set up, the timeliness of that whole project. Um, I did not expect this front end to take that much time. I'm like, okay, it's just, you know, plugging, plugging some code, putting in some other stuff. And I had a lot of fun playing around with it. Um, and and it was definitely not going to be my focus originally. Um, some quick next steps. I would love for uh, a marketer to be able to customize more of that campaign landing page. Um, maybe the button, what it says, you know, different types of themes. Um, also integrate um, like a link shortener for the referral links so that, you know, it's much easier to share like a bit.ly to share. So somebody can share that a lot easier with their friends on different messaging platforms. Um, that's for my presentation. Thanks. This is awesome, Penny. Really nice job. The app is looks beautiful. Um, is there a theme behind this? Do you have to do a lot of yes. CSS fiddling also though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, I got lucky is that I found a, a pretty good theme, a very, very, very big, robust theme, which made it very hard to work with sometimes because there was so much to do. Mm -hmm. um, but it included a lot of these different, like this thing going on on the screen right now. Yeah. <clears throat> no, the whole thing looks very clean. Uh, and awesome. <clears throat> what does the, I mean, you don't have to tell me all the details, but just give me, how complex is the database schema behind this? I feel like there's a lot going on. Is it indeed as complex as it strikes me as being? So it, it not really. Um, it was, it was a lot of like breaking that down into small steps to build that out. And I kept making new versions and trying to figure out how to better approach it and how to better you know, connect all that data. Um, mm -hmm. And that was just, it's great. Like I love looking through my Google spreadsheet of the, my different normalizations of that and different versions of, of how that worked. So it, the, the, the main thing though was a self-join table and that's the conversions are a self-join table. That took a little, um, you know, figuring it out. Got it. In this version, if let's say person A refers B and B refers C, 
when B refers C, does A get any credit for that? No. So that that I guess would be more of a of like a pyramid scheme yeah, or yeah. multi level marketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't attribute anything back to A um, Got directly. Got it. That makes sense. Um, yeah. What's the what's the um, what did you enjoy the most about this project in general? So the what as as I mean, uh, besides for like the project management was really this front end, as I mentioned, like I thought it would be, you know, just a few, a few little bit, like, let me get it done. And, you know, I don't really care about the front end. I want to focus more on back end features, but building like something that's really beautiful and getting all these different uh, modals to work and all the different links to work and, and style nicely was something I really enjoyed. Got it. Overall, like in this app, would you say the back end or the front end was more complex? So definitely the front end. Mm -hmm. Definitely the front end. Got it. Well, your work really paid off. It looks beautiful. Uh, it's Thank really you. well implemented. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Penny. Uh, and last up today, we have James. And Adam will be paneling for James today. All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is James McGuire, and this is my application called the Workout App. So to get started, um, we're just gonna go and just find out a little bit more about this application. So I have an about page. Um, it's a community for exercise creation and exploration. Below it is just a little bit more information on the application. Um, I was inspired to make this application because I have um, experiences being a personal trainer and oftentimes I'll have friends or previous clients messaging me and asking me for ideas for a workout, which can often be kind of tough to convey through a text message. So I figured um, what better thing to kind of work on to solve that problem. And so for here, my workout app is designed for users to view other user created workouts, um, to view our exercise database, and to also be able to create your own workouts. So we'll click this button here to get started. This will route you to a sign up page. So we'll sign somebody up. So I just created a new user, but the sake of demoing purposes, I'm gonna log in as myself, just because I have a little bit more data to work with as this user. So once you log in, this routes you to the homepage. Um, it says start working out today. So the main features are viewing other users' workouts, viewing exercises, and being able to create your own workout as a user. So this will actually click in the picture, route me to my workouts index. This will route to the exercise index, and this will route you to be able to create a workout. Just below this, also on the home page, I have a recent post section and a spotlight section. So what this is doing is it's basically um, going through the workout index and in, in order by descending. So it'll populate the newest workout created by any user at the top and it'll shove the rest down below it. So if I were to create, which I'll demo in just a moment, um, creating a new workout, it would become the top workout object up here. And the spotlight feature is currently just populating um, with the newest workout as well. So a little bit of incentive to use the app um, and create a workout because it'll be showing right on the front home page here. And then just at the bottom, I do have um, a footer. So what I'm gonna show first is the workouts. And so this will route you to the workout index. Here you'll be able to see all the user created workouts. Um, we have beginner strength, legs, whatever the users decide to create. It'll also show who it was created by. Most of these are currently created by me. We do have one workout created by Amanda down here. So what we can do is we can go to any of these workouts and take a look at it. So when I click on this beginner strength workout, it takes me to the show page for this workout. Um, we have a few options here. So down, I have the, down here, I have this table that shows all the exercises and the attributes associated with it. So for example, if I wanted to edit this exercise, um, maybe two reps is a little bit too little. So let's, let's start out with 10. Um, this here is a form and it's used by my join table. Um, to link the relationship together. So my join table has the attributes of sets, reps, weight, and notes. When I click update, we'll see now that the bench press was updated to 10 reps. 
if I wanted to, um, I could always edit the workout itself, which routes to just changing the name of the workout in the description. And so now this routes us back to the workout index. Um, and then you can see that the description for this was actually updated. Um, if I feel like, hey, I need to add some more exercises, what this will do will take me to the exercises index page. And so here I created this API manually. Um, it's all the exercises on this page that belong to the database. So users can scroll through, they'll see a picture, they'll have the name of the exercise. It'll have what muscle groups this exercise is targeting and detailed instructions for how to perform the exercise. If we find, hey, um, we like one of these exercises, what I can do is I can click this link. It'll direct me to a show page for that exercise. And then I can add that exercise. Um, so this functionality here, I have a drop down selected. And what this does is it populates this list with all of the current users workouts that belong to them. So it eliminates any error for potentially adding it to the wrong exercise. Um, so for this one, we'll just say we'll put this in beginner strength for now. This join table will allow me to attach this workout and put it into, or excuse me, this exercise and put it into the workout object. And so for now, we'll just keep it simple and we'll add this exercise. This will route back to the workout show page for that exer or for that workout. And you'll see now that pushups does belong to this workout. So another functionality that I would like to show um, is I would like to create a new workout because that's one of the reasons for signing up. So what we'll do, this will take us to the create workout page. Uh, we'll just call it for now, new workout. We'll say it's new. So you can see here, this routes back to the workout index page. Um, it looks blank, there's nothing there right now, unfortunately, but a cool feature that I have implemented, which will change that blank image soon. If we do look just to check some of the other features, this is now populated on the recent post, is the most recent post, and it is in the spotlight. Um, there's no picture yet, so we're gonna fix that because we need to add exercises to our workout. So I can actually get routed right to the workout show page for this. We'll add an exercise and we'll say the incline dumbbell chest press looks like a good one to start. So we'll go to the exercise show page and we're going to add this exercise to our new workout. Um, start off nice and easy. Say, hey, it's our first time. And we'll add this exercise. So now this routes me to that workout show page for that workout. And so something I want to show now is that when we go back to our home page or even the workout index, we see that this new workout um, actually has a picture. It looks a little bit more like a workout that we can use and look at. Um, and then the spotlight also shows it. There's another link to the spotlight workout. And something that I found um, pretty interesting and cool that um, I implemented was that I didn't actually have a data attribute, um, like an image for workouts. Um, so when I was going to my workout show page or my index page, it looked like a lot of white space. I'm like, you kind of need a picture for this. So what, how I populate an image for the workout object is it actually um, searches through the workout object and it finds the first exercise within the workout. And it'll use that exercise image to populate an image for the workout container. And that is essentially the main functionality of my app. Thank you for your time. All right, well done. Um, I think I, I think I considered that exact theme for my capstone many, many years ago. So yeah, good choice there. Um, Thank you. So which, which was your favorite, front end, back end? Did you find one more challenging than the other? Or? Um, I really enjoyed working with both. Um, the back end felt a little bit smoother. I felt a little bit more comfortable. Um, certainly took me less time to implement. Um, but I did really enjoy the front end because it felt like very much of like a learning experience on the go. Um, and I was able to get creative with it. I usually like um, tend to lean more towards the back end because I like the data manipulation. Um, but I realized that I had to do pretty much the same amount on the front end as well with JavaScript code and building the correct functions to grab um, the right attributes and the right objects from the back end. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of your back end, I'm curious what exactly is the relationship between the users, the workouts, and the exercises? Because I so, think I understand. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry to cut you off. Um, the workouts belong to users, and then essentially um, the exercises is a has many through, like for my workout exercises join table. So that's how they're able to access that. Um, I thought that was important because 
I really wanted the exercises themselves um, themselves to stay the same way. I didn't want them getting manipulated by users. Um, so using that workout exercise join table, which slaps on the attributes of sets and reps, et cetera, um, was super useful to allow users to, um, you know, really put in more detailed information on the workout and the exercise that they're doing without manipulating the actual exercise object itself. Cool, cool. Um, in terms of the user and the workouts, it, so does they, each user have to create their own workout or can they say a new user, see a workout that another user created and basically say that, give me that? So there isn't an actual um, functionality yet mm -hmm. to look at another user's worker and to inherently say, hey, this is my own kind of workout now, but they have Got full it. access to browse any workout created by the okay. user to see um, what that workout consists of on the workout show page. And they can totally go through the same workout um, and use it to however they like. Cool. All right. That's very cool. So if you could change one thing about this, or if you could go back and, and do one thing again, what, what would you change? Um, I feel pretty good about what I have so far. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily change anything in particular to what I've done, but there's definitely, um, you know, looking at what I have now, I'm still inspired to um, expand upon this application um, and add more features to it. Um, I think it would be nice to maybe add more of like a social aspect to it to where you could go to each user and they have an each, they each have like a, a show page for all their workouts. Um, I would definitely would like to have some kind of like review system where uh, users can leave reviews and other comments and, you know, maybe use some kind of conditional to, to push like the, the most highest rated review uh, workout, maybe into the spotlight or something like that as well. Awesome. Great work. I think it's a uh, fantastic, looks good and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Excellent. Thank you. Nice job, James. Uh, and everyone, thank you so much. That is uh, the conclusion of our capstone presentations for this cohort. Um, everyone did a really amazing job and I'm super proud of all of you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>